Hello everyone, my name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you all. And today we are going to be playing Dark Lords. Of course, if you know my channel, you've been here a while, I love angels and anytime that there's a new angel deck, I'm going to play it. So we have the new skill that just came out along with the new cards from the brand new box, Starving Venom. Uh, sorry I didn't stream tonight, I thought the box was coming tomorrow. So, well, Konami did not tell us when the box was coming, so I assumed it was tomorrow, and I didn't plan for a stream tonight. Anyway, so the skill is called One-Winged Dark Lord. You can only use this skill's second effect once per duel. At the beginning of the duel, add one Dark Lord Contact and one Dark Lord Uprising to your deck. Okay, Dark Lord Contact is a limit three card, so being able to add a third copy of it to your deck allowing you to still play one copy of the other limit three dark lord cards pretty good and then dark lord uprising is skill locked uh, this card is not in the game so the only way that you can get it is with the skill which is fair it's a good card uh, during this duel you cannot normal or special summon any monsters except for dark lord monsters except special summons from the extra deck then you can either shuffle one capricious dark lord or one indulged dark lord from your hand into your deck then add one Indulge Dark Lord or Capricious Dark Lord with a different name from the Shuffled Monster from your deck to your hand. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can add one Forbidden Quick Play spell from your deck to your hand instead. Cool. So you could potentially play Forbidden Droplet if you have it. I don't. And you potentially play Forbidden Lance or Forbidden Chalice or whatever you want, uh, which is fine. You know, it'd be cool to get some free negates, free uh, protection. But I'm going to go over the basics of the deck so you guys can see it. By the way, if you guys are wondering what the Sephiroth reference, is, if you guys are wondering what the Sephiroth reference is about, uh, Capricious Dark Lord and Indulge Dark Lord both only have one wing for some reason. Anyway, um, so for the main deck, we are playing one copy of Dark Lord Ixchel. By the way, there is a pickup box if you want to play Dark Lords. Dark Lord Ixchel, uh, rank uh, level ten Dark Fairy Monster. Uh, you can discard this card and one Dark Lord card to draw two cards. That's insane. That's a really good effect. Probably one of the better limit one cards we have in the game, to be honest. During any of the player's turn, you can pay 1,000 life points. Target one Dark Lord spell or trap in your graveyard. Apply that target's effect, then shuffle that target into the deck. So the way Dark Lords work is really interesting. They have a bunch of cards that can only be activated once per turn, but you can use the Dark Lord monsters to recycle your spell and traps because they are activating the effect of the card, not replaying the card. So, for example, if you play Ixchel, you can actually re reactivate your Banishment of the Dark Lords or your Dark Lord Contact, uh, even though you've already played it this turn. That's really, really good. And it's one of the reasons that Ixchel is so, so deadly. You can only special summon Dark Lord Ixchel once per turn. This card is insane. Um, so yeah, if I could play three of this, I would. I own three of it, but I'm playing it one. Next up, we have Dark Lord Superbia. Uh, level 8, 2900 attack, 2400 defense, Dark Fairy. When this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can target one fairy monster in your graveyard except Dark Lord Superbia and special summon it. Okay, we're going to play three of this card because this card is very, very strong. And you'll see how in the replay. We are playing two copies of Indulge Dark Lord and three copies of Capricious Dark Lord to better use the skill. Uh, I would recommend that you probably play three copies of Indulge Dark Lord, but uh, I don't have three yet. Only going through the box once so far. Uh, I'll get it. Indulge Dark Lord. If this card is normal or special summon, you can take up to two, or sorry, you can take two Dark Lord monsters from your hand or deck with different levels, except Indulge Dark Lord. Special summon one of them to your opponent's field in defense position and add the other one to your hand. Also, you cannot activate monster effects for this turn except fairy monsters. You can only use this effect once per turn. So when you summon Indulge Dark Lord, you will give your opponent your Dark Lord Uka back, and then you will add the um, Dark Lord Morningstar from your deck to your hand. And that's going to be really powerful for you. So yeah, uh, this is your normal summon. You play basically like nine copies of it, so you'll always have it. All right, <clears throat> Dark Lord Morningstar, level eleven. The card text is irrelevant. This is a fusion material for the dark, the first uh, Dark Lord. You are almost never going to play this card, and it's just going to be fused from the hand, which is completely fine. If you want to know what it does, it's got 3,000 attack, 3,000 defense. Cannot be special summoned if this card is tribute summoned. You get special summon Dark Lord monsters from your hand or deck up to the number of effect monsters your opponent controls, which is funny. 
While you control another Dark Lord monster, your opponent cannot target this card with effects, and once per turn you can send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard, equal to the number of Dark Lord monsters on the field, and if you do, gain 500 life points for each Dark Lord card sent to the graveyard by this effect. All those effects are decent, but really, this card is for fusing. That's it. Uh, Morningstar is uh, the name given to Samael, by the way, and this sword looks amazing. Uh, Lucifer, sorry. Anyway, uh, Dark Lord Nastin. Uh, this is a dark fairy monster, uh, level 7, 2600 attack, 2600 defense. You can discard two other Dark Lord cards, special summon this card from your hand. During either player's turn, you can pay 1000 life points and then target one Dark Lord spell or trap in your graveyard, apply that target's effect, then shuffle that target into the deck. You can only use this effect of Dark Lord Nastin once per turn, and you can only special summon Dark Lord Nastin once per turn. Oh, so this is a cool card. Um, hmm. It does, ha it does special summon itself from the hand, which is pretty unique for Dark Lords. The cost is a little bit high, though. You have to have three Dark Lord cards in your hand. Um, so I'm only playing it at one. I'm not sure if this is correct, um, but looking at the ratios, this seemed the best. Um, it's possible that you would play, like, two Nastin and only one Amdusk, but uh, hmm. they're kind of, like, as good as each other, to be honest. <laughs> Three copies of Capricious Dark Lord. During the main phase, you can activate this effect, tribute summon one fairy monster face up. That's pretty good. Gives you an extra normal summon, uh, which can be useful, especially if you use it during your opponent's turn. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can make all monsters your opponent currently controls lose 500 attack and defense for each fairy monster on the field until the end of the turn. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. If you tribute it off or if you link it off, then this card will just nuke your opponent's attack position monsters. Um, also, it's every fairy monster on the field, not every fairy monster on your field, so you could potentially punish them if you use uh, the Indulge Dark Lord to give them one of your fairy monsters. Cool effect. Dark Lord Amdusk. This is a level 6 dark fairy monster. You can discard this card and one Dark Lord card, target one Dark Lord card in your graveyard, and add it to your hand. Pretty good. Um, similarly to uh, Ixchel, this is a 1 card discard as opposed to a 2 card discard. Uh, well, I mean... Uh, Nastin like needs to have two other cards. Amdusk and Ixchel only need one other card and themselves. Um, during either player's turn, you can pay 1,000 life points, target one Dark Lord Spell or Trap in your graveyard, apply that target's effect, then shuffle that target into the deck. You can only use each effect once per turn, and you can only special summon Amdusk once per turn. Well, this card is level 6, which makes it pretty useful because you can tribute summon it with only one tribute. So this is going to be a good target for your Capricious Dark Lord. Dark Lord Ukabak, level 3 Dark Fairy Monster. If this card is normal or special summon, you can send one Dark Lord card from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use this effect once per turn. Uh, you're not going to do this. You just you run this card in the deck solely to have a weak card to give to your opponent. Three copies of Banishment of the Dark Lords. This is a uh, spell card. Um, add one Dark Lord card from your deck to your hand, except Banishment of the Dark Lords. You can only activate one Banishment of the Dark Lords per turn. It's very funny that they... Um, that they changed how Casey Bling worked before they before they were willing to buff Dark Lords. To be honest, that's really funny to me. Um, but I mean, they released a um, uh, pickup box, so Banishment of the Dark Lords is not expensive anymore. Everyone can get three copies of it now. Dark Lord Contact. Uh, this is a special summon one Dark Lord monster from your graveyard in defense position. You can only activate one Dark Lord Contact per turn. So these two cards can both be repeated with your other Dark Lord cards, so you definitely want to play as many copies of them as you want. Then lastly, we have the Sanctified Dark Lord at 1. Uh, send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up on the field of the graveyard. Negate the effects of one face up effect monster on the field until the end of the turn, and if you do, gain life points equal to its attack points. You can only activate one the Sanctified Dark Lord per turn. Uh, that's very good. Um, the Sanctified Dark Lord does allow you to negate an effect monster without targeting it. This was the main way to deal with Chaos Max when Chaos Max was a thing. Um, sad how crazy Chaos Max got power swept. Power swept. Um, uh, you can out a lot of cards. You can negate Dengirsu's ability to protect itself. You can negate um, Ubel's ability to prevent damage. You can negate um, Lyralesk's. Uh, well, hmm. you'd have to chain to the Lyralesk. Like, uh, you could either... Okay. You could either use this effect to make it so that the Lyralesk monster um, uh, doesn't have any attack, doesn't have the ability to attack directly when they declare an attack, or um, reduce its attack points to zero, or prevent it from attacking multiple times, whatever you want to do. 
or you could potentially um, use it in response to your opponent trying to make it so that they can't take any damage to negate it. Uh, either way, pretty good. So, yeah, Dark Lords are definitely a deck that they wanted in the meta, and it makes sense that they would uh, kind of push them, especially since they have this non-targeted negate that really answers Lyrosk. So, I hope you guys have fun with that. For the extra deck, there are two monsters. The first Dark Lord, this is the only reason I'm playing this deck. The first Dark Lord is my favorite fusion monster in the game. Look at the card art. It's fantastic. You have a... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight winged angel um, <clears throat> with a massive uh, broadsword and a beautiful black shield. Um, the armor looks fantastic. Uh, the appearance is both elven and there's a powerful halo. Just, just fantastic. Like this is this is the quintessential depiction of an angel. It looks great and it's male. Um, which I, I appreciate. So, Dark, 4,000 attack points, 4,000 defense points. Uh, fairy Fusion Monster requires three Dark Fairy Monsters. Uh, your opponent cannot target Fairy Monsters you control with card effects. You can only use the first, you can only use one of the following effects of the first Dark Lord per turn, only once that turn. If this card is Fusion Summoned, using Dark Lord Morningstar as material, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. That is really, really good. Being able to pop your opponent's entire board is fantastic. And then during the main phase, as a quick effect, you can pay 1,000 life points to special summon one fairy monster from your hand or your graveyard in defense position. This is basically like being able to repeat Dark Lord Contact, except it doesn't actually shuffle Dark Lord Contact back into the deck. And uh, you also can special summon from the hand, which is something that Dark Lords can't really do too well. It makes perfect sense for them. Uh, but basically, the first Dark Lord is going to clear the board and kill your opponent. The other card is Kadeb Dark Lord. This is a Link 2. It requires two fairy monsters. You can tribute some of these uh, fairy monsters that require two tributes by banishing monsters from your graveyard. Instead of tributing, it is still treated as a tribute summon. That is a very unique and interesting effect. Um, I mean, if you want to... So, okay. You can use... Um, if you link off two monsters, you can use Capricious to... Activate the effect to tribute summon a fairy monster, and then you can use Condemned Dark Lord to banish the monsters to basically summon Dark Lord Morningstar. But the problem is, if you do that, uh, you have the Condemned Dark Lord on the field, and you have the Capricious Dark Lord on the field because you didn't tribute it. That means that the Dark Lord Morningstar only has one space left to special summon a monster from the deck. Uh, so it's not particularly amazing. And you can play Dark Lord of Desire or Dark Lord Asmodeus if you want to get some cool tribute summon effects off. Um, I don't think Condemned Dark Lord is good enough. I don't think it's fast enough. I could be wrong. The skill is pretty good. But right now, I think the deck is solely focused on fusions. And I think that this is the best way to play the deck. So Condemned Dark Lord is a good card. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think that you're going to be tribute summoning with it. The other effects are good. You can discard one card, take one Dark Lord monster from your deck, and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. That's great. So it's just a free search every turn. Uh, you can only use this effect once per turn, and then once per turn during your end phase, gain 500 life points for each fairy monster on the field, on both players' fields. Solid. Good. Dark Lords pay a lot of life points, so being able to heal is very important. Okay. Now, there's no fusions in the deck, so you're wondering why you see keep talking about fusions. Why is there a fusion bunch in the extract? The skill gives us one copy of Dark Lord Uprising. Dark Lord Uprising is a trap card. Send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face field to the graveyard. Fusion summon one dark fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. Then you can gain life points equal to the original attack of the monster sent to the graveyard to activate this effect. You can only activate one Dark Lord Uprising per turn. So that is an extremely good effect. It is. It is crazy. Now you do have to pay a card. That, that's, that's rough. The first Dark Lord costs essentially four monsters to make with this effect. But you gain 2,900 life points or 2,000 life points or whatever you're paying. And then you also clear the board. So it's completely 100% worth it. This is so good. And uh, again, the artwork looks fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the gameplay. All right, we are going first. Uh, this opponent is not going to be particularly dangerous, but basically I want to show the combo to you guys. So our hand is Dark Lord Contact, Dark Lord Amdusk, Banishment of the Dark Lords, and Dark Lord Superbia. Uh, as long as you have Dark Lord Superbia, but you basically have full combo. So, we're going to activate the Banishment to draw Ixchel. Then we'll activate Ixchel's effect. 
we discard uh, both Superbia and Ixchel. We draw, and we do draw the Capricious Dark Lord, so we're going to activate our skill to return Capricious Dark Lord and draw Indulge Dark Lord. Normal Summon Indulge Dark Lord, Indulge Dark Lord effect. We Special Summon the Dark Lord Ukabak to the opponent's field, and then we add Dark Lord Morningstar to our hand. Excellent. Now we can activate Dark Lord Contact, and we will use it to revive Dark Lord Superbia. And when Dark Lord Superbia is revived, it will now revive the other monster that it was discarded with. So we get Ixchel back as well. We'll activate Ixchel's effect. We pay 1,000 life points, and we're going to repeat the effect of Banishment of the Dark Lords. Banishment of the Dark Lords can also add Dark Lord cards, not Dark Lord monsters. So we're going to draw our Dark Lord Uprising. So we were able to search with this in this turn, Indulge Dark Lord, Ixchel, uh, Morningstar, and Uprising. Basically, every card we used for the combo was searched or drawn, except for Superbia. And, um, and Ukabak, I guess. No, Ukabak was searched as well. So yeah, this deck is extremely good at searching, at deck thinning, and at uh, flooding the board. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set our Dark Lord Uprising and pass. It's our opponent's turn. They're going to summon Amazonas Princess. <clears throat> Draw Village, activate Village, set a card, activate the Banner of Courage. At that point, I'm just going to go ahead and Uprising. I pitch the Superbia and then use the monsters in my hand as fusion material to fusion summon the first Dark Lord. Gain 2900, the first Dark Lord destroys every card on the field. We're going to use Ixchel's effect to repeat contact and revive. Our turn, we attack directly, and that's game. There you go. Being able to fusion summon during your opponent's turn, destroy every card on their field, you can fuse from hand so your opponent can't remove all your cards. It is dangerous to play a dark deck with dark, uh, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon running around, but that's the fun of it, right? Go off. What are they going to do, right? It's you versus them, your angel versus their dragon. I say you're going to win. So my name is Serafi, and I was thrilled to have all of you with me.